Hello everyone. The topic today we cover is dementia. So while coming to the dementia, we can say that the dementia is a one of the important disease condition of old age people and it is a chronic organic brain disorder. Okay, dementia is otherwise called as chronic organic brain disease or brain disorder. So we'll see the meaning of dementia. So while coming to the dementia, it is derived from two Latin words, D and mens. The word meaning D, which refers to away, and mens, which refers to mind. So the meaning of dementia is away from mind. And usually it occurs the old age people and come to the definition of dementia. So we can say dementia is a progressive impairment in intellectual ability and memory with, uh, without impairment in clear consciousness. That is the definition of dementia. So the definition says that it's a progressive. Progressive means step by step. The disease will be developing step by step because it is having a chronic onset. Chronic onset in the sense, the beginning of the disease condition, usually it takes so many years and usually old age people, more than 60 years of people will be developing with dementia. That's why we are saying it's a progressive impairment. Impairment means disability with the memory. Means mainly it affects memory and other intellectual ability like attention, concentration, judgment. So other intellectual ability will be affecting, but there is no problem with the consciousness. In a clear consciousness, the person will be having impairment of memory and other intellectual ability. So that is the definition of dementia. And we'll see the epidemiology. So while coming to the epidemiology, worldwide 1.03 percentage people are suffering with dementia. And most of the persons are more than 60 years of age group. And if you come to the 85 years and above, the incidence may increase up to five times. That's why we can say it is a disease of old age people. And in ICD, it is classified in chapter F002, F09. That is the ICD classification of dementia. Now we'll see the uh, etiological factor or what are the various causes of dementia. So while coming to the etiology, the first and main or the important etiology is degenerative causes of brain. Means in the brain cell, that is the neurons will be having a degeneration. Degeneration means some damage will be there, maybe like a protein deposition or like that some damage will be there and it is a permanent damage and the entire area will be getting affected. So that is a degenerative causes of dementia. Example like in case of Alzheimer's disease, Pick's disorder, Huntington's diseases, Levy body dementia, all these things are the examples of degenerative causes. Then vascular causes. If any problem with the cardiovascular system, especially patient is having hypertension. So in case of hypertension, there is a chance for uh, breakage of minute blood vessels in the brain and it can lead to hematoma, then paralysis or stroke can be done, means affected. And later in old age, the patient may be developing with dementia. Then move to the metabolic causes, the chronic vitamin B12 deficiency. In case of vitamin B12 deficiency, it can affect with the brain and the person may be developing dementia in future. Then hepatic failure, any disease of the liver and leads to the liver failure. So that also can cause the uh, dementia in old age people. Then certain infections. So especially the infections of brain, meningitis it may be, or encephalitis it may be, or sometimes HIV patient, the patient is suffering with HIV and AIDS. They are also suffering with the uh, dementia in old age group. Then syphilis. So all these things are the sexually transmitted disease. So such people can be developing with the dementia in old age. Then intracranial. So while coming to the intracranial, any head injury, or there is a condition called hydrocephalus. In hydrocephalus, in the brain, the cerebrospinal fluid will be increasing. So as a result of that one, later the person may be developing with the dementia. Then hematoma, okay, there is a intracranial hematoma, blood clot will be formed. So uh, as a result of this blood clot, the remaining blood uh, brain cells will be damaged and later 
uh, when they go for old age people like uh, 60 years and above age group, they may be developing with the dementia. Then anoxia. Okay. In anoxia means uh, the reduced blood supply to the brain. Okay. So that, also, that is another factor of uh, dementia. And the next one, intoxication. Intoxication means like uh, intoxication of alcohol. It's a chronic alcoholic patient. The person is taking alcohol for continuously five year, 10 year like that. So that can be having an effect on brain and later the person may be developing with the uh, dementia. So intoxication of alcohol and certain medication in the psychiatric medications are there like uh, benzodiazepine, uh, anxiolytic agent or anti-anxiety agent agents continuously if the person using later there may be chance for developing dementia. So these are the various etiological factor of dementia. Now we'll see the clinical features of dementia. In the definition itself we have seen that it's a progressive loss of memory. So that is an important clinical feature of dementia, the loss of memory. So while coming to the loss of memory, initially the recent and immediate memory will be affecting. Then later the remote memory, the past memory means past thing also day by day the person start to uh, forget. Then the family members unable to recognize even the family members also. The person may forget his uh, husband or wife or children like that even the family members they are unable to recognize. Then they may be having problem with attention, poor attention, poor concentration. Then there is a problem with hallucination and delusion. In the hallucination, usually the person will be having a visual type of hallucination and the delusion, usually they'll be having a persecutory type of delusion. The person thinking that other people are trying to harm me and all the daily activities, day by day their daily activities, they are uh, reducing, there will be a problem with the daily activities even they forget to brush, they will forget to uh, take bath also, like that each and everything progressively they will try to forget it. Then they will be having an anxiety. Why there is an anxiety in a clear conscious patient is the developing with the loss of memory. So the anxiety will be increasing and the person may be having a wandering tendency. So sometimes the person may go out of the home, they may forget where is my home. So because of that one, the person may be roaming here and there. They'll be having a wandering tendency. Then uh, these are the main clinical features of dementia. Then we'll move to the uh, diagnostic evaluation. So while coming to the diagnostic evaluation, there is not a specific diagnostic evaluation for dementia. Because dementia it is a degenerative disorder. So mainly we can go for history collection. We can collect the history regarding previous head injury or intoxication, all the history we can collect it and mental status examination. So mental status examination, why we are doing? We have to rule out the patient is having any associated psychiatric disorder is there or not. That's why we are going for mental status examination and they will be having all the medical complications because they are old age people. So we can go for all the lab investigation like urine examination, uh, blood examination, CT scan, MRI scan to find out any of the brain abnormalities and all other investigation, liver function test, uh, kidney function test, all the investigation can be done during the investigation or diagnostic procedure. And now we'll move to the uh, treatment of dementia. And same like diagnostic evaluation, there is not a specific treatment for dementia. It is a, there is no treatment for dementia. We can go for symptomatic treatment. And moreover, the members, the family members, we have to give a support because uh, the effect will be on family members. They will be suffering uh, about the disease condition or regarding the patient or related to the patient, the sufferers will be the family members. So the support should be given to the family members and we'll mainly focus on the symptomatic treatment. So there we have to increase the activities of daily living of the patient. We have to provide support related to the all activities of daily living. And while coming to this activities of daily living, we have to follow mainly three R's. So that may be the uh, repeat, direct and reassure the patient. Repeat means the patient may be forgetting. So each activity, we have to repeat it. So for that, we can use certain, whenever the patient is getting up, we can use a small piece of paper that can be pasted near the bed and uh, do brushing, do bathing, like that we can paste near the patient. So the repeat, 
then reassure because the patient may be having an anxiety. So we have to provide a support. We have to assure the patient and redirect. They may be having sometimes violent behavior, catastrophic behavior being said because some of the activity if the person start to do, they are unable to complete it. So easily the patient may become violent, the catastrophic reaction being said. So there we have to redirect the patient to some other activity. So these three are repeat, reassure and redirect should be followed. And if they have any type of anxiety, we can provide low dosage of benzodiazepine as an anxiolytic or anti-anxiety drug. If they are associated with a depression, we can go for antidepressant. Or if the patient is having uh, psychotic like a hallucination or delusion, we can go for antipsychotic low doses of antipsychotic drug. And cholinesterase inhibitors can be given to the patient. Okay, donatil is an example for the cholinesterase inhibitor uh, that if the patient is having uh, dementia as a result of Parkinson's, in that case, we can go for uh, this particular drug. So this is all for today's class. Uh, this is Vishan signing off uh, till we meet in the next class.